have your Bibles this afternoon, I would like to ask you to please turn to the book of Acts. I would like to read from uh, Acts chapter 5. We'll begin there. In Acts chapter 5, the main thought that's on my heart uh, tonight is the fact that, first of all, we learn, we as children of God, we need to learn to fear God. I know that there are many people that say that we should not fear God, but you can't really read and study the scriptures without understanding that's a repeated command from God, from the Word of God, that we're to fear God. And when we fear God, I think there are two main motivating factors that cause children of God to be faithful to God, to serve God, uh, to keep them from yielding to temptation. One is fear of God, and the other is love for God. I believe those are the two strongest motivating forces people that really love God and fear God, uh, they're going to be trying to keep the commandments of God. Uh, if we say that we love God, uh, but we're not keeping his commandments, the word of God makes it very clear that we're a liar because uh, if we say that we love God and we're not keeping his commandments, then we're in fact not loving God. So in Acts chapter 5, we want to begin with uh, verses 4 and 5. You can go home and read uh, the last part of chapter 4 and read all of chapter 5. The Word of God here is talking about Peter rebuking Ananias and Sapphira for lying about money. They had sold some land and they said they brought all the money uh, and gave it to the church. Uh, they were lying and Peter makes this statement as he's rebuking Ananias first. Come down to Acts chapter 5 verses 4 and 5. Peter says to Ananias, Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. He has lied to God. Uh, that can be uh, true of any one of us. We can lie to God in a lot of different ways. But Ananias had lied to God. Verse 5 says, And Ananias... Hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. What does that mean? He died. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And then Peter goes to his wife, Sapphira, and uh, addressed her in basically the same way. Peter rebuked uh, Sapphira, come down to verse 10. Uh, then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost, and the young men came in and found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. Then verse 11 says, And great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things. Sometimes we hear about the judgments of God, and we don't fear. But if we recognize that there are actual judgments that God is carrying out, and we see the severity of those judgments. And I think these, this is pretty severe judgment that came on Ananias and Sapphira. They lied to the Holy Ghost. You might say, well, that was a minor thing. No, it was a major thing. Uh, and we need to understand that any time that we're lying to God, that's a major offense. We can lie to God. We can rob God. Lord of God, most of you know that, that when you're not paying your tithes and offerings, then you're robbing God. Will a man rob God? And that's the basically the same thing that uh, Ananias and Sapphira are doing. I would warn all of you, if you're not paying your tithes and offerings, if you're not giving your tithes and offerings, understand you are robbing God. So be careful about that. Uh, Ananias and Sapphira died. Great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. Now, go to Acts chapter 9. We could go all the way through the book of Acts looking at a lot of different occasions where things happened and people were very much afraid of God. They feared God because of what was happening. Uh, many times the Word of God talks about the people of God walking in the fear of the Lord. And if they're walking in the fear of the Lord, they're daily, in their daily walk, they're walking in such a way that they would honor and glorify God. They're walking in the fear of the Lord. That doesn't mean that they're trembling all the time, but it does mean that when they start to do something that's wrong, they're not going to do it because they are walking in the fear of the Lord. 
In Acts chapter 9, verse 31, the word of God says, Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and were edified, and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, were multiplied. I believe that the early church was blessed abundantly by God. They feared God. They loved God. They served God. And the people of God were multiplied. The church, the number in the church was multiplied. <coughs> and remember now, they were walking in the fear of the Lord. In Acts chapter 10, this is going to be the last verse we'll read from Acts. In Acts chapter 10, the word of God tells us about a man whose name was Cornelius. And Cornelius was a man that loved God and feared God and served God. If you look at Acts chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. By the way, up until this point, Cornelius has never heard the word of God preached. Cornelius was a Gentile. God's going to call on Peter to go and preach to Cornelius and his household. And Peter had to be converted or else he would have never gone to Cornelius a Gentile and preached. God gave him a vision, and that vision caused Peter to understand those that God has cleansed, we should never call common or unclean. And these Gentiles, this, this Gentile house, had been cleansed by God because they were loving God and serving God. They were not Jews, they didn't have the word of God, but they were walking in the fear of the Lord. In Acts chapter 10, verses 1 and 2, the word of God says, There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. You hear those three statements about Cornelius? He was a devout man. He was one that feared God with all his house. He gave much alms to the people and he prayed to God always. He was a man who was already born of the Spirit of God before the gospel ever got to him. Peter preaching to him did not cause him to be born again. He was already born of the Spirit of God. He loved God, feared God, served God, prayed to God, and was a man that honored and glorified God with his life. And that's the reason then that God sent Peter to preach to Cornelius and his household was because they were already great servants of God. Come down to chapter 10 after Peter has preached. And I encourage you to go home and read all of chapter 10. Because the Spirit of God was poured out on Cornelius and his household just like it had happened in Acts chapter 2 as the uh, Spirit of God was poured out on the day of Pentecost. And Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost and saw the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit there. Now he's preaching to a Gentile and his household and he saw the great same outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He was shocked that the Holy Spirit of God would be manifest to those Gentiles. He was greatly shocked. It amazed him that the Spirit of God would bless those Gentiles to rejoice under the leadership of the Spirit of God just as those Jews had on the day of Pentecost. So he was shocked and he was amazed. Come down to Acts chapter 10 verses 34 and 35. Acts 10 verses 34 and 35. After Peter has preached to these uh, Gentiles and he's seen the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Acts chapter 10 verse 34 says, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. In every nation, what did Peter learn? In every nation those that fear God and work righteousness are accepted with God. That's the same thing that Solomon said in the close of the book of Ecclesiastes when he says the whole duty of man is to what? Fear God and keep his commandments. That's fearing God and working righteousness. And Peter learned in this experience that he had with Cornelius and his household, Peter learned that God is no respecter of persons, doesn't matter whether it's Jew or Gentile, doesn't matter the race, doesn't matter the education, any time that an individual fears God and works righteousness, they are accepted with God. God is pleased with their life and God honors their life because of their fear of God and their keeping of the commandments of God. I'll go with you back to Matthew just a moment, Matthew chapter 10. The word of God here, and, and the main thing we've been talking about so far is fearing God. 
if you don't periodically, in fact, almost daily, if, you don't, if you're not thinking about the fact that God is watching you, if you're not thinking about the fact that God is judging you and that God is going to judge you, uh, you may not be fearing God to the degree that you should. We need to learn to fear the Lord. The more we read the Word of God, the more we read about God's dealings with His people, the more I believe we will fear God. But now, Jesus is going to talk about two things in this chapter, Matthew chapter 10. First of all, He's going to be talking about the importance of us not fearing men. That's very, very important. Men should not be feared by us. The government should not be feared by us. Uh, we should do what's right in the sight of God. Peter, whenever the Sanhedrin council warned him not to preach, not to talk in the, about the name of Jesus anymore, Peter said we ought to obey God rather than men. And that's a statement that all of us need to live by. We're going to obey, obey God. We're going to follow God. We're going to serve God. We're not going to fear men. And Jesus in this passage is going to do two things. First of all, he's going to say don't fear men, but then he's going to reestablish the uh, statement and the truth, fear God. Don't fear men, but fear God. Ma Matthew chapter 10, beginning with verse 26. <clears throat> Matthew 10, beginning in verse 26. It's going to be three times in this short passage of Scripture where the Word of God tells Jesus speaking, and Jesus says, fear not, fear not. Let me just stop here and ask you, are there occasions in your life that you're afraid? Are there times that you're afraid? It can be many, many different things that happen, but sometimes we are afraid. It doesn't matter how, we tried to study this morning about how Abraham was strong in faith and other people of God that were strong in faith and manifested great faith, but in every one of their lives, though they believed greatly and had tremendous faith in God, in every one of their lives there was a time they would have to say, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. And every time that we're afraid of men or afraid of circumstances or afraid of conditions in the world, every time that we're afraid, other than being afraid of God, every time that we're afraid, it's because we're not trusting in the Lord. We need to pray that God will help us not to be afraid of men or the things and events in this world don't be afraid. I would encourage you not to look at the news. I've told you that repeatedly. I know people, I've got uh, good friends, they look at the news all day long. They listen to the news. And they stay very upset about the news. There's nothing but bad news pretty much on television. Uh, if you want good news, you read the Word of God. If you want to rejoice, you read the Word of God. If you want to get out of the pits and out of the valley, quit reading and studying and listening to things that are going on in the world all the time. You can't fix most of them. Those that you can fix, somebody, God especially, will lead you to those conditions you can do something about. But most of the things in the world you can't fix, and there are too many other things that you can be doing that will honor and glorify God other than worrying about all the things in the world. Matthew chapter 10, beginning in verse 26. The Word of God says, Fear them not, therefore, Jesus speaking, Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in the light. And what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. Now what's the main thing he's told them to preach about? Don't fear men. Fear not. Verse 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. That one verse is telling you, don't fear men, but fear God. Men cannot do anything other than kill the body, but God can destroy both body and soul in hell. Verse 29 says, Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Don't be afraid. God will take care of you. We sing that song. But we need to think about those words. God will take care of you. There are so many promises in the Word of God. 
and so many evidences of God taking care of his people that we ought to be rejoicing every day that we are children of God. We're loved with an everlasting love by God. And God will manifest his love to us in a very special way. If we are loving him and manifesting our love to him, God will manifest his love to us. That's taught very clearly in John chapter 14. If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with them. We will have God's intimate fellowship when we're keeping the commandments of God and following the word of God. Uh, so Jesus is telling us here, don't fear men, but fear God. And don't just not fear men, but don't fear all the events of this world. All of you are familiar with 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. The word of God says, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Every time you have that spirit of fear, every time that you're afraid of men and the events of this world, God has not given you that spirit of fear. But God's given you that spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And whenever we begin to worry about the things of the world and we're afraid, we're losing that power and love and sound mind that God's giving us. Have you ever lost your mind? Any time that you're not trusting in God and fearing God and serving God, you've lost your mind. The mind with power and love and the Spirit of God. If you're full of fear, you've lost your mind. You've lost the mind that you need to have. Uh, Philippians 2.5 said, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus was not afraid of any men or groups of men. Jesus came here into the world for a purpose, and he knew what his purpose was, and he knew how he was going to have to suffer, but he was never afraid of men or the events that they were going to bring in his life. He was not afraid to be crucified. He was not afraid even to be crucified on the cross of Calvary. All that he went through, he went through without any fear of men whatsoever. He feared God, he loved God, he served God, and he's the great example and only perfect example that we have in the scriptures of how we are to live. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 14, just a moment. Matthew chapter 14. I mentioned this morning about Abraham and other great men and women of God, so Abraham and Sarah and others that were great people of faith and they manifested their faith and they loved God and they served the Lord the apostles were great men of God. Uh, you can find fault with anybody in the word of God. You can look at them and you can just look at what they're doing wrong or what they did wrong. If the only time, when you think about David, King David, if every time you think about King David, all you think about is his sin with Bathsheba and having Uriah the Hittite killed. If that's all you think about, you've got a very negative thinking mind. Because the word of God says that David was a man after God's own heart. And, and makes very many positive statements about David. And if our mind can only think about the negative things in David's life and what he did. And these others in the word of God. If we look at the apostles and we look at the times that their faith was weak. And the times they were afraid when they shouldn't have been afraid. If that's what we think about those, pe those men then we're, we're going to experience the same kind of judgment in our lives. Matthew chapter 14, this is where they were in a ship. I'm going to start with verse 24. Matthew chapter 14, starting with verse, well, let me start with verse 26. When, and when the disciples saw Jesus walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for what? Yes. Would you have been afraid if you thought you saw a ghost? Walking on the water? Would you have been afraid? I expect I would have been afraid. Especially if you're out in the boat and you can't get away from him. It's a spirit they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spoke unto them saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if thou be, if it be thou, bid me come to thee, unto thee on the water. And he said, Jesus said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Was that great faith? That was tremendous faith. I know he, I know he messed up, but brethren, he was a man of great faith. Peter stood for what was right most of the time. He did what was right most of the time. 
But Jesus is going to rebuke him here for his little faith. Scripture says, but when he saw the wind, when Peter saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried saying, Lord, save me. And by the way, most of the time when the word of God talks about God saving us, it's not talking about our eternal salvation. Peter right here was about to drown. He wasn't say, saying, Lord, save me and take me on to heaven now that I'm fixing to drown. He wanted to be delivered from drowning. And most of the time, the Word of God is talking about us being delivered from many things other than eternal hell when it's talking about salvation. There are a lot of salvations taught in the Word of God. So Peter says, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? When they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him saying of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Was Peter a man of little faith, a man of no faith, or a man of great faith? It depends on what day in his life you look at. Because there were times he had no faith, there was times he had little faith, but there were times he had great faith. Same thing is true of every one of us. If you love God and fear God, there are times that your faith is strong, and people can look at you and say, that indeed is a child of God. That's a Christian. I see Christ in them. They love the Lord and they're serving the Lord. But there would also be times if they keep looking, they would have to say, I don't know whether he's a child of God or not. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And when we're afraid, we're not pleasing God. We're not being a good Christian when we're afraid. Help us is right. Thank you, Brother Philip. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. And let me say this. There are things that, that you may see somebody afraid of, and you may rebuke them or judge them harshly and say, there's no reason for you to be afraid of that. Uh, there are some people that bad weather, they're very, very afraid of it. And I don't know what experiences they've had in their past, but listen, brethren, I may not be afraid of bad weather. I went fishing with two fishermen one time, two preachers one time, and it was uh, pouring down rain and lightning. We were out on the ocean, and I was right up on the bow of that uh, boat fishing away, water pouring down off my back and off my hat. And one of those men was doing his best to squirrel up under the, there wasn't a dash, but he was trying to get up under the dash of that boat, trying to hide from the lightning. The other preacher told him, said, if you were sure of your salvation, you wouldn't be so scared of that lightning out there. Uh, you can be afraid of lightning and still be sure of your salvation. And so there are people that are afraid of bad weather. They're afraid of other things that you might not be afraid of. But understand this. When you get high and mighty and think you are not going to be afraid of anything, you better fasten your seatbelt. You're going to experience something that will bring you down to your knees and will humble you and you will be afraid. And you need to pray then, God, give me grace and help me not to be afraid. When you are afraid and there are things you're afraid of, you need to pray for God to give you the grace and strength to know what to do when you are afraid. And one of the verses of Scripture that many of you know and use and express is, what time I am afraid, what will I do? I will trust in thee. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In Mark chapter 4, uh, I'll start with verse 35. Mark 4, verse 35. And the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Brethren, if you're out on the ocean and you're boat, your ship is being pounded with waves and it's now full of water, you're going to be afraid. And these apostles were afraid. The scripture says about Jesus and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm and he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? They had 
No faith. No confidence in God. No trust in God. That's one day in their lives where Jesus said they had no faith and they were much, very much afraid. I pray that God will help all of us tonight to understand that we need God's help to not be afraid. Turn your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. You don't really have to turn there because you know this passage very well. It's the occasion where Elijah is about to be, he's being surrounded by the armies of evil armies that are going to try to kill Elijah. And Elijah and his servant are surrounded. And the servant is very much upset. And his servant said, Alas, my master, how shall we do? This is uh, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 15. The servant was scared. He was afraid. He was, a, he was surrounded by an army and he knew that if that army could get hold of them, they were going to kill Elijah and his servant. What are we going to do, master? Talking to Elijah. Verse 16 says, and he answered, what are the next two words? Fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed, and I think I've been calling him Elijah. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened his eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. I'll tell you, brethren, this whole chapter describes the mighty working of God in delivering Elisha and his servant. God was with them. Elisha told his servant, don't be afraid. They that be with us are more than they that be with them. That's true of every one of us. God has his angels around us. God is around us. God is going to take care of us. God's going to be with us. In closing, go with me to Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41. The two parts to what we're trying to study tonight. The first part is, give me two words. The first part is what? Fear God. The first part is fear God. And then the second part of what we've been studying is fear not. Fear not. Fear God. Both are, true. Both are true. We need to fear God, but we don't need to be fearing men and all the events in life. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. He lists a number of reasons we ought not to be afraid in this one verse of Scripture. Isaiah 41 and verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Do you believe God is with you everywhere you go? God is with you. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. In verse 13 he says, For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Next two words, verse 14, fear not. Isaiah chapter 43, he continues to tell the people of God, fear not. In Isaiah 43 verse 1 he says, Fear not. For I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, by thy name, thou art mine. Verse 2 is very beautiful. It says, when thou passest through the waters, not if I, you are going to pass through troubled waters. And God says, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Verse 5, he says, Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather them from the west. Brethren, because God has promised that he will be with us, we ought not to be afraid. The scripture says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, God has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. May God bless you all and bless us all, that we would be good soldiers of Jesus Christ, that we would fight the good fight of faith, that we would lay hold on eternal life, and that we would not be afraid, that we would know that God is with us every day, is my prayer for Christ's sake. When we walk with